Hey traders, this is Scott Barkley. Hey, I just finished a great new video. As you know, I put uh, short little videos up there to help you on your journey. And uh, this one's especially great. Uh, but my goal is to turn your pains into gains. After all, I wrote the book, The Import and the Empowered Forex Trader, Turning Pains into Gains. So I'm going to get out of here and we'll get right into the video. Uh, hey traders, this is Scott Barclay. This is uh, the top three Forex trading strategies, turning pains into gains. So the market does only three things. It trends, it channels, and it ranges, okay? And big boys, big boys are the bankers, do very simple things to accomplish their agenda. But they can do a lot of simple things. What's the difference? in the three structures. Trends. Trends, there are lots of participants, including swing and position traders. The ATR, the average true range of a currency, gets bigger each day as more participants join in. Elliott wave principle is usually enforced, that's five, and those waves can be measured based on the Fibonacci sequence. Trends are found in the 240-minute chart for retail trader, traders, never the day chart. The Forex rarely trends, but when it does, it's awesome. Now, we target 55 plus pips. Why? Because it's part of the Fibonacci sequence that the bankers use. If there are not 55 pips, we pass. So here are five ways down, as you can see, and note the ABC corrective move on the wave four, right? So trends are less than 45 degrees, right? And they're also found only in the 240 chart. So you see how the market moves to the Fibonacci sequence and stalls on the supports, okay? So uh, you can see here, this is the Fibonacci sequence right here. You see, they know right where it is. They knew where it was, 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 they knew where it was. You see that? Okay, so they know where it is, all right? But they also know where the um, um, Fibonacci uh, levels are. Here's one here, here's one here, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there. See, so they know where all these levels are. And if they know where those levels are, so should you, right? And it's pretty clear in this chart where the opportunity is, where the opportunity is. This one is a two part one, see, right there, all right? Then this big one, they just ran it right straight down, all right? All right, so. Uh, they respect the the both of these numbers, all right? So the all of these fibs are targets, all right? So now channels happen in trends and in ranges. They're found in the 60-minute chart, and they can be steeper than 50, 45 degrees if it's a continuation, and less if it's a corrective move, all right? So you can you can have channels inside a trend. And the steeper, the more participants and less chance of running out of them before the agenda is realized, okay? Now, you can see the corrective move is right here, all right? See, there is a corrective move. So they did a channel down, a channel up, and a channel down, all right? So you've got to get used to seeing it, all right? All right, so in ranges, the forex most likely is ranging, not trending, all right? Ranges can be traded both ways, while trends are only traded in the trend direction. Ranges are found also on a 240-minute chart. So they are traded by the big boys using Fibonacci retracements and Fibonacci extensions. So here you can see this big range here, and you can have a channel and a range. See? All right. But the fibs, these fibs over here, came from this area over here. So this move right here from this top to this bottom is what we use to find this target, this target, this target, this target, this target, and the, finally the top, right? And you can see they know exactly where they are, right? So your job when you put, open up a chart is to not do this, but to go back here and find the levels and make sure they prove to you that they know where they are, right? So... The first targets are the retracement fibs, which is there, 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 and there, and of course the top. Now, the next one is the Fibonacci extensions. Those are the second targets, okay? Both are relevant, as you can see. 
All right, so the 1.618 there, they knew it exactly. Why? Because it was set from down here. You see, this first move here set the whole thing up right there. All right, and that gave you these targets, these targets, these targets. By the way, the 1,000 is a very, very important fib every day on the, for the intraday market. All right, so the key is finding their targets with 55 plus pips left in the ATR today. Regardless if you're trending or ranging, what sets it up? Pullbacks. Pullbacks are your friend. Now, I would get venture, I don't know the statistic, but I would venture that 98.9% of all retail traders have no clue what the ATR is or even how to use it. All right, so here we go. All right, this pullback set up the whole move. Right there. See, the targets were set from this. This is a, the first little move down, and then the big one that sets the move. And you can see they knew it, they knew it, they knew it, they knew it, they knew it. Of course, they knew the top. All right. So, this first pullback set the whole move up and the targets. All right. Then, this second pullback set up the next move or the continuation from the first move right there. All right. And then, this pullback up here set up the finish. All right. Now, there's nothing magical here. It's just a simple pullback to targets. Why do we make it harder than that? Because we want to follow dummy indicator, man. Indicators don't work. So this pullback, this is wave two, uh, and because we're trending, okay, we don't know that up here, but we eventually figured out, is uh, sets up the whole move with all the targets all the way down. You see, they know them, they know them, they know them, all right? So there. All right, and that set up the initial move, which was to the S6. All right, then wave four, a pullback, set up the next move, which set up this opportunity right here. And as you can see, eventually they finished it. So, you, what's the key point? Find the wide open space of 55 plus pips to the target, and you might have an opportunity. All right, so let's look here. See, that's a lot of pips. It's one, two, three, four, almost five to 140 pips right there. All right, this pullback right here, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, 180 pips. All right, why were you clicking out for five to 10 pips if there's 180 pips there? And you see, they went right up the hill. All right, so this one right here is only, oh, it's only 90 pips. That's all. All right, nothing. So, Look at this big move. Look at this big move. And look at this one. See? All right. Very simplistic. All right. Now, you can see here. Oh, back to that. All right. You can see here that the wide open space. All right. Let's find it. All right. The wide open space, once you get the pullback, is right here and right here. All right. We got another pullback. Wide open space. Wide open space. Wide open space. Wide open space. Those are the areas you trade if they're 55 pips or more. If they're not 55 pips, walk away from the pair. Right? So what about entries and stops? All right? So stops are five to seven pips above the last support or resistance, depending on your direction, on an odd number that ends in a three or a seven. You never use a five because option contracts use fives. If the market is going to move as planned, it will need to put in lower highs shorting so that the stop is pretty safe and it's just a reverse in a long. Entries are one of these, a close and reverse or a break, hook, and go. Let's look at a close and reverse. All right? In a down move, the entry is one pip above the up candle. So here is one, two, three, four, five down move, close and reverses. All right, where do I enter? Well, this is the up candle right here. So your entry would be one pip below here. Here's the up candle right here. Your pip, your entry is right there. Here's the up candle. Your entry is right there. Here's the up candle. Here's your entry right there. All right, here's the up candle. Here's your entry right there. See, all right, and going up, it's just the opposite, okay? All right, one pip above the down candle, I'm up. One pip above the down candle, I'm in. One pip above the down candle, I'm in. See, all right, not hard. All right, you can see. All right, how how difficult are these stops now? Okay, let's just take a look. We'll take this up move. Here's five to seven pip right there. There's your risk right there. Here's your risk right there. Here's your risk right there. 
Here, oh, it's a little bigger now. Here's your risk right there. Here's your risk right here. All right, see that? Going to the upside. Here's your risk to the upside. Here's your risk to the upside. Here's your risk to the upside. See that? Low risk, high reward. All right. All right. In and up move is just the same, obviously. Now, stops, as you can see, are very tight with the close and reverse. All right. I would I would um, recommend that you practice doing nothing but close and reverses. 300 is the minimum into the game, but I would say you probably need to do 1,000 before you'll get a handle on it. All right, now, a break hook and go. Well, break means it has to break something. So you can see the line over there. I got a break on resistance, all right? So it takes at least 20 minutes on a 10-minute chart to do a break hook and go. So don't try and be early. That's called FOMO, fear of missing out. So you can see, once I get the break over there, this example is 65 pips. So don't be the dumb money and click out for 5 to 10 pips. Break, hook, and go. All right. Now you can see how many candles this took. The break took 1, 2, 3, 3 candles, 30 minutes up, then 1, 2, 3, 30 minutes down. So if that break and hook took 60 minutes, all right, there's no hurry in the forex. All right. And then, then there's a 65 pip move. That is available to anybody who knows what they're doing. So as your skill progresses, add to your winning position with additional lots. This is called pressing your winners, and you do it without exception. Press your winners without exception. It is the key to being successful in the Forex and cryptos. We call it a snowman, all right? So trade one is here, and trade two is here. So if we're coming down, you can see here, Trade one is in, going to be in the head right there, and trade two is going to be in the body going down, right? So over here, you can see here's the trade. Trade one is here, trade two is here. See, upside down snowman, right? So there you go. All right. So in the last five months, five of my students have become full-time prop traders. I have lots of video testimonies attesting that this methodology works. You can see those on my trading site, ProactTraders.com. Check out these pip captures from real traders like you who put this methodology to work every single day. Rob, look at how many lots he's got up there, all right? Here's uh, K, 2,882 pips. That's not uh, for a month, folks. That's from one trade, right? Get that through your head. That's one trade, all right? And uh, there we go. Here's K again. Oh, this is one trade. It's only 5,482 point pips. All right. Thomas down here, 436 pips. See, see them? Those are multiple lots. All right. Adding positions on winning trades. All right. 1,362 for Thomas. All right. For the night. That's just trading one night. All right. Here's the Euro New Zealand. Rob again, 239 pips. All right. Thomas, look at five, six, uh, five positions there. All right, and here's uh, K again, 748 pips, one trade. All right, these are all different days, but uh, there you go. So it works, all right? What you got to do is practice it. You can do it if you'll practice it.